Plus, McDonald's of Guam, I'm Loving It, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Starting now on primetime, GovGuam's expected revenues surpassed its projections. Plus, lawmakers hold a roundtable hearing with Guam's only public hospital. Daniel Perez has that story for you. And the design for the new home of the Sharks is slowly making its way to completion. Hafade and good evening, everyone. Despite the pandemic, or maybe because of it, GovGuam is showing a whopping $48.8 million increase in general fund revenue collections over the adopted fiscal year 2021 projection. Here's more on the latest figures just released by the Budget Bureau. The projected revenue for the current fiscal year was $774.6 million, but according to the latest monthly consolidated revenue and expenditure report, revenues are tracking at $823.5 million. That's nearly $50 million more than the adopted projection. Speaker Therese Terlahi. I know that sounds uh, surprising, right? Uh, given all the instability that we've had in our businesses. However, 48.8 more in general fund revenues this includes, uh, of course, income taxes, and so PUA really helped this amount. In fact, most of the higher-than-expected revenues are from income taxes. Together, individual and corporate taxes are tracking at $68.8 million above projections. This after the federal government poured in hundreds of millions in pandemic aid and unemployment assistance. In contrast, business privilege tax is tracking 13.8 3 million below projections. Our main tourism industry continues to suffer from a near collapse in arrivals. Kirlahi says her priority for the money is to pay tax refunds. So we've got about 30 more days to go, but um, I think we're pretty safe to say that 20 million can be added to our tax refunds uh, account in order to try to catch up with those refunds and, and clear them all out. And while the fiscal year will end with GovGuam banking a lot more money than it expected, the real challenge may just be starting. Unlike FY21, FY22 will not have the benefit of the hundreds of millions in federal assistance as programs such as EIP and PUA have ended. And as the new fiscal year begins next week, Speaker Jalahi is concerned that the governor has still not provided any specifics for spending her American Rescue Plan money. The legislature has learned piecemeal about ARP expenditures to GPA and most recently to GMH. Otherwise, senators remain in the dark. We did put a reporting requirement in that in November, you know, they have to report. But uh, of course... We needed to know this uh, prior to doing a budget for FY22. I think we need to know this now so that we we can give some assurance to people as to how, you know, uh, what everyone's looking at. Businesses, I think, uh, need, if we're going to stabilize our economy, despite, you know, the very uncertain times we are in, we, we just need to give this uh, in a plan where we can all plan around that. The governor has also repeatedly said she will use $300 million of the approximately $600 million in ARP money for a new hospital. And many people continue to ask, what happens if you test positive? According to Public Health's website, you isolate either at home or at the government's isolation facility. However, on the link this morning, Speaker Chirlahi says she's been receiving calls about how difficult it is to check in. This led to a caller who shared her family's story and struggle with public health. I was getting calls from people who couldn't seem to access isolation facilities fast enough when they wanted to get in there and separate themselves from their families. The speaker's comment prompted a woman to call into the link hotline. We kept asking public health, like, hey, can he go into an isolation facility? According to the caller, after her brother tested positive for COVID, he isolated all day outside in a canopy, waiting for word on whether he would be able to go into the government's isolation facility. And by 8 p.m., he was transported to the Bayview. The caller says they were very concerned because they are a big family, 12 to be exact, living in a three-bedroom home. Long story short, over the next couple of days, more folks in the family started feeling sick. One by one, more of her family members began feeling sick. My father, who's 67, uh, we took him to Naval Hospital. He tested positive, you know, on arrival. 
Uh, they said that he had pneumonia as well, but the following day it was like, okay, yeah, you go home because we really don't have any space. When he got home, her siblings, who are also caretakers, began feeling ill. And then there were the children. We had, my again, my 11-year-old nephew and then uh, my two nieces, one is eight years old and one is seven. And, you know, they were feeling headaches, they were feverish, and we were really scared. In total, out of a family of 12, seven were infected with the virus. You know, Madam Speaker, you said, hey, you call public health, you know, they can help you with isolation. And every single time we called, we tried to explain that, you know, it's a large family, we have very limited space. We don't have anywhere for anyone to go to, to safe, safely isolate. They just kept saying, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry, there's no room in isolation. And, uh, you know, everyone in the family is probably going to get it anyway. So just stay together and, hey, if people get sick, they get sick. The sad part, she says, is everyone in the household that was eligible to get vaccinated got vaccinated. If other families are experiencing this, you know, um, I just want to know, who, who should they call? Should they reach out to public health? Do they go to the National Guard? Uh, we were even calling, like, the isolation facilities directly, and we, it was just, it, it was a circle. It was a round robin. Very frustrating. Getting a hold of public health is, is an issue. I, I agree with her. And uh, what she's describing is exactly what I'm describing. These households where the entire households are going to get, uh, you know, affected if we can't isolate them quick enough. According to Guam Homeland Security spokesperson Jenna Gamindi Bloss, as of Wednesday morning, the isolation facility was not at maximum capacity. 60 rooms out of 100 were being utilized. Bloss says she's not tracking anyone being turned away. Public health spokesperson Janella Carrera says for residents who test positive and want to check into the isolation facility, you can call 311 and select option one. Nurses will assess your household situation and will endorse them to enter the facility. For the caller, however, that didn't appear to happen. Instead of staying away, they were forced to stay together. I felt very blessed, you know, because we could, you know, we, 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 we were together and we kind of prayed and, you know, it, we got through it together. One woman is hoping she'll be all right after a mix-up led to her getting two shots of two different vaccines. Here's more. With a return to face-to-face -face education, her elderly mother staying with her, and the governor's vaccine mandate in play, GovGuam employee Jolene Napati finally decided to get her first vaccine shot on August 12th. She says it was the beginning of a major mix-up. They made a mistake. My first dose, they gave me Moderna, but stated Pfizer. Now, um, when I did take my second dose, was over at UOG. The, those, those people there, just based off what my card had said or what has shown. So they gave me Pfizer. So in reality, they gave me two vaccines, which I was unaware of. Napati said she was called by the National Guard shortly after her second shot. They explained the mistake, apologized, told her she should be okay, but to contact her doctor. So she did. She went to her doctor, and her doctor said... I should be fine according to CDC guidelines, and he was just looking up online. Um, and I told him I could have done that myself. Napati got her second shot at UOG on September 10th, 10 days after... She tells KUAM she experienced headaches, but she says she hasn't had any other adverse effects. I'm hoping nothing ha is going to happen, you know. Um, I just hope that it is safe. Meanwhile, the National Guard confirms Napati's doses were crossed, and they say it isn't the first time it's happened. We are tracking twice that, ha that it has happened, unfortunately due to some human error where it may be annotated on the dose card incorrectly, and it happens, unfortunately. But is it safe? And is Napati now considered fully vaccinated? Now, according to the CDC, if the people get cross-dosed, like in a case like this where it was by accident, it's still considered dose complete. So there were no adverse side effects. Uh, we stayed in touch with these patients and made sure nothing bad happened. Napati hopes her story makes people pay attention in case vaccinators aren't. Be sure that you're getting the right one because, like I mentioned, they messed up on mine. With all the stress getting vaxxed has caused an appetite, we asked her if she regrets getting the shots. In a way, yes, but then again, I just, I just, we just all want to be safe. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports.
Meanwhile, the vaccination clinic at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse has seen a steady flow of about 300 to 400 people getting the shot daily. National Guard spokesman Captain Mark Scott. We do have something new happening over next door at the cafeteria. It's a separate vaccination clinic for elderly or individuals with mobility issues where they can call 311, option two, make an appointment with Guam Cedars and we'll address uh, anyone who has those mobility issues in that separate clinic every Wednesday at nine o'clock. He says walk-ins are welcome. To make an appointment, you can register at tinyurl.com backslash vaxguam. And GMH continues to be at the center of the island's attention. And senators held a roundtable hearing on the hospital that covered everything from COVID-19 to capital improvement projects. Daniel Perez reports. Guam Memorial Hospital Assistant Administrator of Administrative Services Don Rabanal compared the highs and lows of COVID with senators yesterday. The low points of COVID, as far as GMH is concerned, were really July and March, where uh, we were averaging about seven and nine respectively. Unfortunately, the current COVID surge that we have now uh, started in August uh, that uh, grew from an average of 12 to about 41 uh, daily. Rabanal told Senators GMH is at maximum capacity and has stretched the staff thin. The maximum um, hospital beds that we have at the hospital is about 161 beds, so we're really surging. Um, beyond our, our current capacity now. So if you notice, uh, especially in surgical ward, uh, we are actually exceeding our uh, maximum staff capacity. It's the same thing with SNF, um, CARE 2 and CARE 3. Uh, we're actually flexing our staff, uh, the, the nursing administrators are flexing their staff to actually cover the requirement of care for our, our, our patients as they come. Associate Administrator of Clinical Services, Dr. Jolene Nuggan, said staff shortages have also affected GMH's ability to administer COVID infusion treatments. We have to always have a bed available for a patient that really needs to be seen and admitted to the hospital. So if a patient comes and is discharged and we do not actually have staff to do the transfusion, they are usually referred to the transfusion clinic at GRMC. GMHA received 300 doses of the Regenco this week. They kept only 50 and gave the rest to GRMC to help with their infusion clinic. GMHA also reported that they received $26.5 million in federal grants. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. And three government offices are closed due to COVID exposure. The American Job Center, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Center, and the Civil Service Commission, all located in the Bell Tower building in Haganya, were shut down for deep cleaning. According to a news release, a GDOL employee tested positive for COVID last week. Contact tracing and other health measures are in effect. The offices will reopen at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Those with appointments with the AJC or the PUA Center will be contacted for rescheduling. And as of news time, there are no tropical storm watches or warnings for the current weather system nearing the region. Tropical disturbance 99W could be upgraded to a tropical depression tonight and a flash flood watch is likely to be issued later. That's according to NWS's Landon Idlet. At a press briefing, he said we can expect a lot of rain, up to three inches for Guam and up to five inches for the CNMI. He added that the window of time is too small for the disturbance to become a typhoon as it nears. It's likely to be a tropical depression or a low-end tropical storm. And once again, we invite you to voice your view on our social media with our daily question. Today's question, have you or someone you know tried to quit chewing betel nut? UOG's Cancer Research Center is also looking for active betel nut chewers for an ongoing study. You can find more on that on KOAM.com. We will, of course, share some of those responses on the link. We're going to take a short break and be back with more news right after this. Our family was recently challenged with a difficult medical condition where my son needed a liver transplant. And I asked Kabul Select Care to assist me with that. And, and he required off-island care. In fact, it can only be taken care of off-island. Uh, so Kabul Select Care was there to help. Uh, with all the referrals and the off ad coverage. Gov Guam employees and retirees, enroll now. 100% truck, 100% Jeep. Experience next level off-roading on your new Jeep Gladiator. 
the most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck crafted for adventure, equipped with best-in-class towing capacity, legendary 4x4 Jeep capability, and backed by Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. Drive home in a 2021 Jeep Gladiator today, starting as low as $315 per paycheck during Jeep Adventure Day. Visit CarsPlusGuam.com to get pre-approved online today. Terms and conditions apply. Cars Plus, driven by you. Thanks for the Big Mac. Yeah, thanks for driving. Wait, what are we listening to? <laughs> get it at McDonald's when you get two of your faves for just six bucks. So you went to Mickey D's and didn't either. Man, that's wrong. But you're all right. Ah. Get it at McDonald's when you get two of your faves for just six bucks. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. Stakeholders got a glimpse of the design of the new Simon Sanchez High School Tuesday evening. GDOE and Taniguchi Ruth Makio Architects provided a progress report on the long-awaited project. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen reports. The Guam Department of Education leadership team, the Simon Sanchez High School administrative team, the Simon Sanchez High School planning committee, and partners from Tanguchi Ruth updated the public Tuesday on the progress of the design for the new Simon Sanchez High School facility at the community meeting held on Facebook. According to Michael Makio of Tanguchi Ruth Makio Architects, the school design is 30% complete. He shared the goals and planning factors for the Simon Sanchez project. In addition to the priority of community feedback, uh, we have a set of really specific criteria that we're applying to the design. Uh, Principal Ms. Naya touched on, the, on these. These include campus safety and well-being. So we want to make sure we provide an environment with resilience and the enhancements needed to help the high school mitigate challenges like the current uh, pandemic and to make sure that there's an environment that's safe from both man-made and natural disasters. Uh, additionally, we want to provide a campus that allows the high school to actually, the existing high school to stay in operation while we're building the new campus. The construction for the new school could begin by next summer. According to Makio, the first phase may be completed by summer of 2024. The locations and types of buildings have been decided, which means they now have to decide how the buildings would look. As of last night, the learning institution will have a large central courtyard, cafeteria, gymnasium, library, and 94 classrooms. While the COVID-19 pandemic has put the lives of many across the globe to a halt, it didn't stop the home of the Sharks from putting what they wanted to see in a new facility in 25 pages of paper. SSHS Principal Carla Masayan highlighted the hard work of the design team during the pandemic. They have been effortlessly participating in almost all of the meetings that we've had with TRMA and they have provided a lot of valuable information. So when it came down to talking about specialized classes, our DCs came in and shared their con uh, concepts about what an ideal classroom would be for their program. According to GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez, the school will be purchased on a lease to own basis. He adds that the department will issue a request for proposal for contractors interested in constructing the new school and financing it once the design is 90% complete. In October of last year, GDOE announced TRMA as the primary designer, administrative consultant, and owner representative for the Guam Department of Education. Since then, TRMA has taken the lead to gather information and work closely with the planning committee to develop a design for a new SSHS that meets the core needs, vision, and mission of the school and its stakeholders. Reporting for Guam Zoo's Network, Guahu Siaze Ogun. In court news, a competency hearing for 27-year-old murder defendant John Richard Bass III has been extended. Bass is accused of killing 39-year-old Virginia Laguana in June at the Hotel Mayana in Tamuning. Defense counsel Heather Zona has requested Bass's medical records from Pennsylvania. A 45-day extension was granted in the case due in part to the rise in COVID cases at the Department of Corrections. After the fatal stabbing, Bass was on the run for almost 24 hours before authorities were able to track him down and arrest him in Jigo. And two men indicted last week for attempted murder and aggravated assault appeared in Superior Court today for arraignment. 
Justin Michael Duenas and Jensen Develis are accused of a shooting at Tranquilo Court in Dededo in August. Duenas pleaded not guilty and waived his right to a speedy trial. His case was assigned to Judge Vern Perez. Develis faces additional charges because he allegedly shot two people. He will have to appear again next week, though, because his attorney was not present. And accused murderer Nicholas Wayne Moore has been indicted in a separate case. According to the AG's office, he was charged with two counts of criminal sexual conduct for having sex with a minor younger than 16 around December of 2016 and January 2017. Moore would have been around 18 at the time. He is scheduled to be arraigned on the charges on October 13th. Meanwhile, in July, Moore, along with Troy Damion, was charged with the murder of Michael Castro, who was reported missing in October of 2020. Moore was also indicted in a separate incident, also in October, involving a drive-by shooting in Agania Heights. He has pleaded not guilty in those two cases. And in other news, some ratepayers may have noticed an extra insurance charge on their monthly power bills. It's because in January, GPA borrowed $10 million from its own self-insurance fund to hold down rates. But starting in August, the utility began recovering that money through a new surcharge. For the average residential bill of 1,000 kilowatts per month, it will add about $2.90. GPA says the recovery will be spread out over the next two and a half years, ending in March 2024. That's when it expects the self-insurance fund will be fully restored to its $20 million level. And there's been an outpouring of condolences with the passing today of former Inilahan Mayor Doris Flores Lujan. She served as the village leader for two terms ending in 2018. Dededo Mayor Melissa Sabaris was mayor's council president during that time. Being in Inilahan, she was very concerned about the historical preservation. As a matter of fact, the house that she lives in was one of the historical house homes that was um, uh, refurbished to the original uh, condition um, in, in Alahan. And so she treasures that memory because uh, that's where she and her brother, her late brother, had grown up and they were raised by their parents. The Inalahan Municipal Planning Council also announced its condolences, saying, The people of Inalahan have lost a great leader, an inspirational woman, and a great friend. Prior to becoming mayor, Lujan worked for 42 years with the federal government. Funeral arrangements are pending. Sports is next. Don't go away. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and freeload at ITE. Discounts on fuel at Shell, vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at ITE, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. 
the new crispy chicken sandwich taco from Taco Bell. Is it a sandwich or a taco? Which side are you on? Try it only at Taco Bell. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Terry DeBow, AAAG president, you know, with the governor allowing sports to return to practices. What's the latest with athletes and coaches? Well, fortunately, the kids were already practicing uh, at the beginning of the school year in anticipation of a normal uh, sports season. We were set back because of that, uh, well, for three weeks due to the um, upswing, the the uprise in the cases, which we understand it was a precautionary measure. Unfortunately, you know, it did affect um, some of our practice time. However, um, with the IIAG, we have the three season calendar now. So our sports seasons during the fall sports would be cross country, boys beach volleyball, boys soccer, girls volleyball, and bowling. We worked together to put the return to play protocols together ever since November of last year. Those were approved by Department of Public Health. So essentially, we're just going to re-implement those rules. Um, those are all the necessary mitigation protocols, um, including maintaining, providing the rosters and names of the athletes um, and the coaches and the other participants and um, doing the temperature checks, ensuring that all the facilities are prepared with um, and sanitized, um, just to ensure that all of our activities are performed in compliance with the guidelines and uh, to ensure that our kids are protected, as well as the coaches. Anything with vaccination as far as athletes, coaches, and potential spectators? Like anybody else, we're going to comply with the regulations. Um, so all the teams are required to uh, do their due diligence and in checking the vaccination status of their participants. Um, if weekly tests need to be done, um, give thanks to public health right now. They've been very hard at work doing the, um, the training for the Binax testing. Um, in fact, we had 10 people that were trained um, within our organization that pretty much complements a, a large number of others throughout this private schools that have already been tested, uh, trained and certified for the Binax testing. I'm just uh, thankful that the governor's given us this opportunity and um, that it, it, I think it reflects her trust as well as the medical community's trust and the interscholastic um, organization's ability to um, safely conduct these activities for our kids. I think it's a very important part um, of the livelihood of our students. Everybody keeps on repeating it. I mean, it's about the mental, social well-being, emotional well-being of our students. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. When making the new Kentucky Fried Chicken Sandwich, people asked how I felt about burger places selling fried chicken. I'd say that's none of my business. Just like making fried chicken is none of theirs. Get the new Kentucky Fried Chicken Sandwich. It's finger licking good. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Wednesday, September 2-2. So happy birthday to you if you are 
Keisha Lynn Sablon, happy birthday to you. Love, Mommy, Daddy, and Bobo. Logan Tyler, Duenas Mendiola, happy seventh birthday to you and to our honey. Dad, Mom, Ashton, Cody, and Sophie send you all of their love and they're very, very proud of you. Also celebrating a seventh birthday today, Noah Bobbin. From his mom, dad, grandparents, and family, they wish Noah the very best. Also, happy birthday to a member of KUM's extended family, the Big 5-0, Ray Charperis. We love you so very much and hope you have an amazing birthday. Love, Miss Joan E. And the kiddos and entire family. Ray, have a great birthday. I've known Ray since college. So, Ray, it's great to know you have a great 50th birthday. And it's a great day to be a dinga, too, because Ray's twin brother, Ralph, also celebrates birthday 50 as twins do. Ralph, happy birthday to you as well. Enjoy your day. Love, York. That's our report for tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a great night, everyone. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Half a day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of In Full Zoom.